Okay, so we're looking at uh, air convection, um, specifically how wind is created. And so to do that, I've got a convection box right here. And it's not perfectly sealed, but we have it covered. We've got chimney A and chimney B. Now you'll notice when you're looking at it, chimney A has underneath it several candles that are lit. That is to cre create and generate heat. So I want you to think back to what you've learned in elementary science and earlier middle school science. These candles are heating up the air inside of the tank. And what does hot air like to do? So keep that in mind. Now, before we get into the demo, we're going to actually draw um, this box. And we're going to add to the diagram as we go through the demonstration. So just start. And you can title it uh, Air Convection Demo. Okay, and then we'll just do a little rough sketch of the box. Doesn't have to be pretty. We've got chimney A and chimney B. Actually, I think I need do I need to reverse that? Chimney B and chimney A. There we go. That way it matches what you're seeing. Underneath chimney A, we've got the candle, so I'll just draw one quick little candle flame there. Okay, now. So you continue, we've got to light some incense. Let it burn a little bit. Okay, so the incense is letting off a pretty good amount of smoke, and the smoke rises. As the smoke rises, it links back to what we were talking about a second ago. When you think back to elementary, hot air likes to go where? likes to go up. And that's generally what smoke tends to do. Now, when I hold the incense over chimney B, all right, let's start over chimney A. When I hold the incense over chimney A, the smoke starts changing its motion. Here it's going up, it's nice and slow. Over the chimney, it's moving a lot faster. It's almost as if something is pushing it from underneath. And then I'm going to move it over chimney B. I'm going to move it over chimney B. Suddenly the smoke is not going up anymore. It's actually going down. And it might be difficult to see, but it's getting sucked into chimney B and into the tank. And so what's happening here? Well, this is air convection. The hot air being created by the candles under chimney A is forcing itself out of chimney A. So the hot air is rising. You can see the rise as the smoke moves faster. Well, as air leaves the tank out of chimney A, air must enter the tank again. Otherwise, it can't keep equilibrium. And so the air enters chimney B. And as it enters, you can see it taking the smoke with it. Well, this is working because of the fact that hot air rises and cold air likes to sink. And so if we go back to our diagram, we can actually write here that it's relatively hot above the candle inside of the tank and hot air likes to rise, so it goes out of chimney A. Now once you're outside, the air is relatively cool, especially compared to the air right above the candle. And if hot air likes to rise, what does cold air like to do? Cold air likes to sink and go in like that. And then this creates what we call a convection current. It's a convection current because it's, it's continual, it's, it's cyclical. Now, let's pretend for just half a second that you're a little bitty stick figure person standing inside of the tank. If you're standing inside of the tank, what are you going to be feeling right here next to those candles? You'll feel the air moving across you from one side of the tank to the other side of the tank. And what do we call air moving? We call it wind. So wind is air movement. caused by convection. And we'll put in parentheses here, hot air rising and cold air sinking. Now, a common misconception with this is you think about the words hot and cold and you think in absolutes. You think like 90 degrees plus and you think below 30 degrees. That's not necessarily true. It might be better to say warmer air rises and cooler air sinks. Because the temperature difference doesn't have to be great. It can be 10 degrees difference, 90 degrees, 80 degrees. Not really anyone would say 80 degrees was cold. 
but everyone would agree that 80 degrees is cooler than 90 degrees, so keep that in mind. It's not necessarily hot and cold, it's warmer air versus cooler air. So that's why we have wind on hot days, because you go outside and it's hot, oh my gosh, and you think, how can air convection happen? It's all hot. But some of it is a little hotter, some of it is a little cooler, and so we get the air motion. Same thing in winter, it's all cold. Well, that's just relative. Some of it is a little warmer, some of it is a little cooler, and that little difference is what keeps it going. Um, this is also part of what's going to drive the weather systems, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but I also want to talk just real briefly about why hot air likes to rise and cold air likes to sink. So hot air, and it's all linked to density. Okay, we know less dense things float and more dense things sink. Okay, and we learned that back in elementary and we looked at it in sixth grade pretty heavily. Warm air, if we were drawing like air particles, warm air particles, I'll draw them a little bigger so maybe they show up on the screen. They tend to be pretty spaced out. There's a lot of room between them. But cooler air particles, same number of air particles, take up a lot less room. And this is why warm air rises. It's less dense. It's actually trying to float up. Cool air is more dense. It's actually trying to sink down. And so that's what's driving this air convection. 